Joining us in the studio this morning, Betsy Glick, who's executive editor of People Magazine, which first reported this story on its website, and Dr. Jennifer Ashton, of course, our medical uh, our medical correspondent. Good to have both of you with us this morning. Uh, Betsy, what's the, what's the very latest on her condition? Who is with her, uh, and, and how are they preparing? She is at home. She is surrounded by loved ones. Her children are all there. She has good friends there. Her sister is there. And they are sort of hanging out and talking and looking at photos. And that's what we know. She's obviously very sick. She, she had stomach pains over Thanksgiving, and they found that the cancer had spread to her liver. And, and Jen, when you hear this, and, and it seems like it had been such an aggressive cancer for her, 2004 breast cancer, 2006 we learned it spread to her bones, we've now learned it had spread to her liver and doctors saying basically there's nothing more we can do. Uh, what, what could her condition be at this point? with that diagnosis? Well, obviously, the unfortunate reality when you're talking about cancer and cancer treatment is that not all cancer is curable. So a large part of cancer treatment involves treating the cancer and the sites to which it has spread. Really, once cancer is in the liver, the, the big concern is that the liver is not able to clear the toxins that our body produces. And actually, there usually isn't that much pain. Some people might get a little disoriented. They might get a little tired and eventually slip into a coma. But obviously, Obviously, this shifts the medical focus from cure to treating the patient's symptoms and making them as comfortable as possible. So it's not that you're not treating the patient anymore. Right. You're just not trying to cure the cancer. The symptoms are very different, and then the actual treatment that you're using is different Absolutely. than the cancer treatment. Do we know, Betsy, at all, if there has been any, been any discussion of something like hospice care, or is it not quite at that point yet? I think what we know is that she's at home and that she is not in pain, as, as Dr. Ashton says. Mm -hmm. And she's, as, as she has lived her life, she is doing this her way. And Erica, you know, a lot of great hospice care now can be delivered at home. So actually they can right. be made comfortable. All of the hospice support that you can get at, an, at a facility mm -hmm. is now available in a person's home. And that can be so important. It is, to and, and, it's, and it's very important too to the person who is going through it because it allows them to be where they would like to be, surrounded by their friends and family in a comfortable environment in their own home. Uh, in terms of, we've, we've heard that they may be you know, she's been writing letters. I mean, she has been planning for this for Absolutely. some time, as we know, and, mm -hmm. and preparing her children, especially the youngest two, for this. Um, what other kinds of family preparation do we know is she involved in? I think, I think what you've said is the most important thing. She has been preparing her children. She has been writing letters to them. She has been going through her things for years. And she has been writing these books. I mean, she's, she's trying to be both a public example and a private example of the things that she mentions on her Facebook posting, the, the sense of resilience and faith. And that is, that is how she is coping with this. A lot of the resilience, people may tie that to, of course, what has transpired between her and her husband. Absolutely. Do we know where John Edwards is at this point? He's there. He's not. He's, he's in and out. He mm -hmm. lives nearby. He is the father of their three children who are there. He will be taking care of these children. And he's very much a presence. How important is it in this stage uh, of, of someone's life, Jen, as, as they start to go through this process to have certain people around. Oh, it's so important, Erica. You know, something that, that I've said quite a bit in my own practice is it's a privilege to be with someone when they come into the world, but it is similarly a privilege to be with someone as they leave the mm -hmm. world. And so being surrounded by their, their closest friends and family is so important, and it is an example of grace um, to know both as a doctor and as a patient when to say, I've had enough. Yeah, a sacred passage, as a very close friend of mine called it, and it is, in fact, a privilege to Absolutely. be there. Absolutely. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, Betsy Glick, appreciate you both being with us this morning. Absolutely.